Good moed. We're learning Maseches Yevamos Daf Mem Beis. Yep, that's where we are. We're six, seven lines down at the two dots. And today, what we're going to do is analyze some of the basic ideas that we've been learning about, especially in regards to the three-month rule that we know that we're not supposed to um, to marry someone within three months of a previous marriage. And today, we're going to see the actual reasons why. Let's jump right in. We understand in the case of Yibam why you can't marry someone during the first three months because you could be Pogeb Erva and that could be an Isser Deoraisa. Got it. When you're not dealing with, um, when you're not dealing with Arayos issues, because with Yibam, remember, we don't know if that child that she's pregnant with is her husband. And if the child's a Ben Kayama, then there is no Yibam. And if there is, the child is a, is a, if the child is a Ben Kayama, then there's no Yibam. If the child dies, then there is Yibam. So very complicated. And we don't know retroactively. It could be that he was Mizana uh, by accident or maybe even on purpose. But what about Sha'ar Kol Nashimamai? Why does everybody else have to wait three months? So here the Gemara gives a couple of answers. Here's answer number one. Amr of Nachman, Amr Shmuel, Mishum Do Amr Kral Yosacha Lelukim. That's the Pasuk. And the way we, we darshan the Pasuk is Sounds like a pretty obvious answer. We, we need to have Yichus. We need to know who the father is. Is the person in Israel? Is the person a lady? Is the person a coin? What are the family been hugging? And you, you need answers to those questions. Says the Gemara Masiv Rava, the Fichach, the Fichach is not a Fichach and Argamar. It's a quote from a Brisa. Uh, elsewhere, it says, Let's say you have um, a husband and wife who are not Jewish. And then they convert together. So there we have no Shiloh where the Zerah is. We, we know who the father is. We know exactly who it is. So who cares? If you have a Ger Gioris, they have to separate for three months too. But why would they have to separate for three months? If your concern is only one of Yichus and we need to know who the father is. Okay, so we know who the father is in the case of a Ger and a Gioris who decide to become Jewish together. Why do we have to even show a separation? We know who the father is. Says the Gemara, here too, there is a distinction to be made. What's the distinction? There's a difference between a child that's Nizra Bektusha, where the implantation, the implantation, whatever the actual nuance is, uh, where one is done Bektusha and one is not done Bektusha. Right, what is the, I was trying to figure out what the practical. I don't know. I didn't even. It just struck me right now. It's it might not either be. way, the child has to convert, right? No. The other way. No. Either way, the child doesn't have to convert. Either way. If a woman is, it's ubar ubar vime imo. Correct. Correct. So she, if she's already a gioras, yeah. so there obviously is a difference here. We have to do some research. I, I it just struck me right now. I should have asked it when I was learning learning it earlier, but uh, that's what the Gemara says: is that there is an afkamina between a child. That is Nizra Bektusha and a child that's not Nizra is, Bektusha. But practically, what's the. Uh... Um, okay, I'll have to look into that. That's answer number one. And answer number two, quarter of the way down, Rava Amar, Xera Shema Yisaz Achosome Aviv. I'm going to read all four cases and we'll just plow through them. Maybe if, in fact, you're not careful about who the father is, then maybe that father can have other children and you'll end up marrying a sibling without knowing it uh, because you don't know who your father is. Shema Yisaz you might make a mistake and think that there's a uh, yibum through the mother's side, which there is not, because you don't know who your father is. You might make a mistake that way. You could end There are plenty of cases where someone could make an error and someone could end up going out into the shuk because they don't know who the right people are. They don't know who, whose kid you are. They have no idea. If you were really the, the new husband's kid, then there's no, then there's yibum. No, it's all of these confusing cases. Fine. So then Rava doesn't, uh, Rava's concern was more of one of, of seemingly arayos, seemingly who, who's going to be intimate with who. And you could end up having these accidental, inadvertent cases where people could marry one another or a woman could be Yotze Slashuk and it would be Asr. The Gemara doesn't like this either. Masiv Rav Chananya. Bechulan ani kore bahen mishum takonas erva. What does Bechulan mean? So let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi says... Where's Rashi? Rashi is two thirds of the way down on the page. Rashi says, Any woman who's not allowed to marry, where the rabbi said that there's no marriage and there's no yibum, the concern there is just we're, we're concerned about intimacy. That's what we're concerned about back in the Gemara. So over there, by, uh, by all of the cases where there's a restriction on marriage, it's uh, because of Takanus Erva. But Vikan, and Rashi says what Vikan is, Behamtanas shall Khan, when we're talking about the waiting for three months, what does the Gemara say? Mishum Takanas Vlad. There we said the concern should be the kid. Vimisa, if Rava is really right, 
Why is Rava highlighting concerns of Erva? All of Rava's concerns were concerns about people being intimate with one another when they should not be. All of his examples are Takanas Erva, but the Brisa here, quoted by Rav Hananya, says, the Khan, when we talk about marriage, the, the concern is the Vlad, not Erva. So what's Rava talking about? How does he align his shita, where he seems to say that the reason why we require everyone to wait three months is because of issues of erba. The Bryce says the issue is not erba. The issue has got to be the vlad. So the Ra Rava would respond, hai mishum takonas vlad de lo lifka behu erba. They're all the same thing. He basically ties them up in a boat. Uh, how do you get to children who don't know who their fathers are? It's because of issues of erba. They're all one issue. He says they're two parts, of, two sides of the same coin. Then the Gemara turns to a fundamental question. Why three months? Now, we know the basic answer of three months because we have to wait for hukra ubra if, if the woman is going to start showing some signs. We'll see today that it's not only signs of, of a belly. Now, we'll see soon that there's a way to check if she's in fact pregnant, but we don't do that. But let's get to that. So the Gemara says, okay, we know that it's three, but bishlama, tamtin beis chodashim v'tina selo. I understand you can't wait two months when you're unsure. That is, that's our case. Tahainu sveka, that's our case of suffix. That let's say there's a baby that's born seven months after the two-month mark. So then, it's either nine months from the, from the first husband, because it, like we said you can get married at two months, and if the baby is born seven months later, it's either nine months, and really she conceived from the first husband, and if the baby is at this nine-month mark, I guess in theory, from the two-month uh, marriage point, if they get married at two months, then maybe, maybe it's the new husband's child. So it says the Gemara, that I understand. Ella, why don't we say the following? Why don't we say, Tamtin Chodesh Echad Why don't we say, let's wait only one month after the death of her husband, and then she can get married? And says the Gemara as follows. Ve'ilah Shiva with a seven-month marriage, Yolda Hai Bar Shiva If the if there's only seven months of pregnancy, then we can assume that it, the child belongs to the second husband. Ve'ilatmanya Yolda. And if the child is eight months, so if it's an eight-month gestational period, so then we can assume it's from the previous husband. Says the Gemara, and this is very strange, Rashi actually draws this out for us. The phrase here of inami is actually a teretz. That's what Rashi says, three-fourths of the way down. Rashi says, Very unique usage of the phrase of inami. Anyways, back in the Gemara, inami, well, I have another way to explain this. A child could be uh, born at an eight-month mark, and ikalamemar de basra, who really still could be the, the new couple. Maybe Dilma ishtahuye ishtahe chodesh echad bi'iyaber. Maybe she didn't get pregnant the first month. Uh, she missed ovulation by a couple of days, whatever the case may be, and then she only conceived in the second month bi'iyaber. So it could be that if you only have uh, if we do allow for a couple to marry one month after her previous marriage ends, then we would still have a suffix of who the child is. So then the Gemara gets even more nuanced. With Tamtin, maybe we should say the couple should not wait one month and not wait two months, but wait two and a half months. With Tamtin, wait two and a half months and then get married. If there's a seven-month gestational period, then that will definitely belong to the new husband. If the baby's born at six and a half months, Yalda, hi that's two and a half months plus six and a half months is nine months for the previous husband because the Ibar Basar who Barshisu Palgolochaye. We're under an assumption that a child born at six and a half months is not a viable pregnancy. Now we our science is so much better. I deal with this all the time. Babies born, you know, super early and one's the breast, whatever. These things come up all the time. They're relatively normal, relatively normal things that come up. They're relatively normal. So these things come up nowadays, but the Gemara's assumption at that time is probably the Matthias too, is that babies born that early just, they just didn't have a chance, you know, without an ox. Without significant intervention. Yeah, I mean, even when we are in those scenarios, they're in a NICU and they're tubed and they're, uh, they're oxygen. I mean, it's lung development and a whole bunch of other issues. So this says the Gemara, that's, uh, that, this also is not a possibility. Inami, here too, it doesn't work out because the Shiso Palga Yolda, when a child is born after six and a half months, Ikalamemar de Basra, who it could still be from the second uh, couple. How so? Damamar Zutra, Filu Laman Damar Yoledes, Letes, Eno Yoledes, the Mikutain. Even for the ones who say that nine months has to be full, they can't be into the nine months, it has to be a full nine months. However, Yolda Lazayan, Yoledes, the Mikutain. We do have precedent in Halacha for a child to be born in the month of the seventh month, which means six point something on its way up to the seventh month. So this Pasuk is referring to Shmuel, that he was born 
after two tkufos, each tkufa of the year, there's four seasons, each tkufa is three months. He's born after two tkufos is six months. Miud Yom and Beis, he was born into the seventh month, six days and six months and two days. So then we see, therefore, that there is precedent for a baby to be born at that time. So it is still possible, just like Shmuel was born that way, it's still possible that we could have a confusion if a baby's born after six and a half months and the couple got married after the two and a half month mark, it's still possible that the child would be, would be born to the new couple. So says the Gemara, fine, why don't we go back to the other, uh, other end of the pendulum? Why don't we say, wait a week or two after she, gets, uh, after she loses her first marriage and then get married then. And if she gets to the three month mark, so we'll check her instantly at the three month mark, 90, 90 days, she goes for their version of a pregnancy test. Now we, we check the human, uh, the HCG. <laughs> that, that's not what they did. So let's see what's, what happens here. Maybe they should get married after a month. They can be intimate, no big deal, because if she's not showing on day 90, the signs of <clears throat> hey, Royo, a pregnancy, then we can fairly assume that the baby's hers if, she's, if she then has a baby. If she is showing, showing signs of pregnancy on day 90, then we know that it's from the previous husband. All we need is that one to two. So again, our, our science, our metzias is different now. These are halachic assumptions and or, you know, nishtana hatvaim, whatever the case may be. But their assumption was that exactly at 90 days, you're already showing or you already, you can do a badika to check. Amar of Safra, in bodkin esanesuos. We do not do badikas for pregnancy in cases like this because shelo yizganu al ba'alein. It's not, it's not kishmak. Why is it not kishmak? Because what are they checking for? Is this your baby or not your baby? That's not kishmak. We, we don't do these kinds of badikas. So therefore, we don't allow the checking on day one. Rashi says they were able to check a woman's breasts and be able to tell that there was uh, changes in the texture of the flesh of the body as it began to prepare for milk, uh, where, uh, where the body expands a little bit. Fine. That's what Rashi explains. The nivdika behilucha. Fine. Let's not check in a way that's invasive. Let's just check in a way where she can step on the ground. And if, in fact, she's carrying a little bit more weight, so then her depression, Rashi explains, her depression in the ground, behilucha, will be lower in the ground. It says the Gemara, nah, that, that doesn't work either. Amar Rami Barchama, Isha Mechape Atzma, the woman herself is going to make her footprints, uh, you know, she's going to modify the footprints. Kadesha Yirash Bena Benichse Baila. She wants her current husband to pay the bills. So she's going to make it look like, look like this kid is actually the new kid, new pregnancy. She'll, she'll make her, her footprints, uh, what will she make them? She'll make them lighter because that way it'll look like she's a little bit less pregnant. And that way it's, uh, it's on the second husband and not on the first. Fine. So what did we conclude from here? Three months is the only option. We can't do one to two weeks because of the badika. We can't do one month because it's confusing. We can't do two months because it's confusing. We can't do six and a half, we can't do two and a half months because it's confusing. LMI, it must just be that the line in the sand is three months, 90 days. Oh, wow. Good one. Uh, an inadvertent pun. All right. Says the Gemara, five, six, seven, eight lines from the bottom of the page on Mem Bez Medala. We learned about this earlier, but the Gemara does ask a great question. Let's say we know she's pregnant. Why wait three months? She's showing early or pregnancy test or whatever. Why then? Why can't you just get married? Why does it say? Why is it? And we learned this earlier. Where was this? We learned this on Daf Lamed Vav. And this case is a case where, uh, where Nebuch, a, a friend dies and the friend's wife is pregnant or nursing. So the din is you're not allowed to marry her. Um, and we said over there, the concern was that if you get married and she conceives that it could, uh, kill, the it could kill the baby through a, a, a few steps of when she gets pregnant, then her milk will stop. And they didn't have what we have in our, in our modern culture of pre-made bottles and powders, whatever. So the baby was at risk. So why do we say that? Why don't we say that they get married? So it says the Gemara, we're concerned that through Tash Mishamita, that it is possible, and there, are, there is science behind this. I mentioned this last time. I can't remember what it's called anymore. But where, uh, where it, it, there are recorded cases where a woman conceived after already being pregnant, a magical moment where she actually drops a second egg while she's already pregnant. She shouldn't be menstruating at all, but she did. And she got pregnant. So there we're concerned that that new baby will crush the, the first baby from the previous husband. It says the Gemara, if that's true that we're concerned about Uber Sanda, then why can any couple who's pregnant have Tash Mishamita? Didei Nami, any husband should be the same problem. How can you have Tash Mishamita with a woman who's pregnant if you're concerned about a sandal? Says the Gemara, no, because the husband's different. If you, however you get solve this problem, either she has a moch, where a woman would insert some type of absorbent cloth into her body prior to Tash Mishamita, 
Um, and uh, then during Tashma Shamita, this would absorb the Zerah and lower the likelihood of her conceiving, the old version of birth control. And according to the ones who say that they didn't use a moch, the couple would just have Tashma Shamita, and a Kodesh Baruch Hu will take care of the rest. They'll get Rachamim from Hashem. Says the Gemara, Hachanami, if you're going to say that about a husband, you can also say it about this guy who could marry his friend who passed away, to marry his friend's wife. Hachanami, Ilaman Damar B'moch B'moch, Ilaman Damar Minah Shemayim Yirachamu, Minah Shemayim Yirachamu. Whatever you're going to say about one, you can say about the other. So if you're going to say that there's some form of birth control or, or a Kaddish Baruch who's like a Shomer Psayim Hashem a little bit, you can have Tash Meshamita with a woman who's pregnant because we're not concerned about Ubersam. Elamishum de Chasa. Now the husband is going to be, is, is uh, what are we concerned about? We're concerned about Chasa. Rashi highlights. Rashi, two lines from the bottom. Shem Ma'achob and Tash Meshamita. We're concerned about a Tash Meshamita that could damage the, the baby. If you're saying that about the friend, about, about the man who could marry his friend's wife, so if you're concerned about him, then the husband should have the same concern. No. The, the husband's going to be more careful. Why? He doesn't want to kill anybody. If they're going to let, let the man marry his friend's wife, she, she's pregnant and she has no, she's not, she has, her husband just died. Okay, if she's pregnant. We know whose kid it is. No sveikos, let them get married. He'll be careful. Says the Gemara, no. We know that when a woman is pregnant, that her body is preparing for nursing. Top of membez medbez. And Dilma, perhaps once she's already nursing her baby, Yabra, she's going to get pregnant again. Her milk is going to dry up. The cut lale, and that, again, through a snowball of effects, will lead to the death of the baby. Says the Gemara, same concern over here. The same should apply by a husband as well. Says the Gemara, when it comes to the husband, she can he can supplant the diet of that child with other kinds of milk and with eggs. Again, exactly how, what they fed the kid, I don't know. I, was it like raw eggs? I it was unclear, but it had to be something that the baby could drink. <laughs> I can't. He's a baby, so you got okay. Whatever the case is, says the Gemara. Did Nami memas masala be beitz and mechalav? She would do the same thing. The husband, the wife would do the same thing. What does she says the Gemara? She may not lo yav labal. If she's concerned that this child is not hers, and if he marries a friend, that's talk of the case. Then maybe he won't even give money because he thinks it's not his kid. Says the Gemara. But yeah, but she can go to Bezdin, release be'ine liorshim. She can go to the Yorshim and say, "You need to support me. This is your. This is you know. It's a." Uh, it's like alimony. You have to make sure you're covering the cost of the kid. I'm going to buy a woman is embarrassed to do that. Isha Busha Lavo the Bezdin. It's very uncomfortable for her, to, for her to go to Bezdin under those circumstances. And Derek Agav, as things go along, because she's hesitating, going to Bezdin, but Rega says, but no. Unfortunately, this could lead to a, a very, very sad case. So this is why we don't like this case of uh, why we still need to wait three months, even in the case of the Ubar, where a woman is pregnant and her husband dies. There's no stuff think about whose baby it is. We know that it's the previous husband's baby. She's walking around with the tummy. We know exactly what's going. It doesn't matter. We're concerned about the medical issues as they are. They apply across the boards. Okay, so that's what we're concerned about. That's why that case is different. Now, when we initially had learned the Mishnah uh, upon which we're analyzing, which was at the bottom of Mem Aleph and Aleph, there it had the following language. Um, we're right now at the two dots, Mem Beis and Aleph, about six lines down. It said, achas, achas besulos ve achas beulos. Whether or not they attach Meshamita, they were virgins or they were not virgins. So it says the Gemara, Hainihu Basulas Vahainihu Arusos. Shouldn't it be the case that a Basula is also an Arusa? An Arusa is a woman who did not have Tashma Shamita necessarily because she should not have slept with her husband yet. They're not fully married. And Hainihu Baulos Vahainihu Nesuos. Why distinguish in the Mishnah between Baulos, who we know have had Tashma Shamita, and Nesuos, so we assume had Tashma Shamita? So Amar Yehud Hachi Kamar, this is really Pshad and why we have such a verbose Mishnah. We're, we're not used to verbose Mishnahs, but this one is over the top. Cases that are seemingly extraneous. Achas Basulos Vachas Baulos, whether they are, are, are uh, virgins or not. Shanis Armalu, they became widowed, or Shanis Garsh, or that they got divorced. And that could have been that their previous marriage was only from Arison or from Nusun. There are so many iterations of the cases here. Were they initially only betrothed or were they fully married or did they get divorced? Because there are so many cases, the Mishnah went out of its way to make sure that we captured all of the different iterations. Says the Gemara, quarter of the way down, Rebbe Lazar, lo all the Bay Medrash. One day, Rebbe Lazar did not go to the base Medrash. Ashkechei the Ravasi, when he was sitting outside of his house, he didn't go to the base Medrash, but he did see Ravasi. And he called out, he said, Amr Leh, my Amr Abonim the Bay Medrash. What did you guys learn today in Yeshiva? I wasn't able to make it. 
We said that the halacha is like Rabbi Yossi. Says the, what, what is the din of Rabbi Yossi? So we have to look back in our Mishnah. Our Mishnah is on the bottom of Mem Aleph Amar Aleph. And Rabbi Yossi says, in the very bottom line of our of that page on Mem Aleph Amar Aleph, he says, Kol arsu, chutz min ha'almana, He says that everyone is allowed to get Arisen during this period of time, no problem. Back in our Gemara, so Michlal, if we say that the halacha is like Rabbi Yossi, Michlal de Yechida'a Poligale, it seems that there is one single individual who is arguing on him. Why does it seem that way? So the Mephorshim explained that the reason why it seems that way is because since we have a principle of Yachid Barabim Halacha Kirabim, and since we said that the din is like Rabbi Yossi, it implies that the Stam Shita and the Brisa must be a single person, because otherwise, Yachid Barabim Halacha Kirabim, if you're saying this language of Halacha Kirab Yossi, it implies that there must be a singular Shita, because otherwise we wouldn't pass him like Rabbi Yossi. Says the Gemara, you're absolutely right. In, you are correct. Tanya, here's the brisa that shows us who this shita is. A woman who constantly runs to her father's house, or she was angry at her husband, and therefore there was no tash mishamita. My husband was in jail, where they were not able to be intimate. Or the husband was older or ill, and therefore they were not together. Or she was sick. Or she even if she miscarried after the death of her husband, even if she's barren, or she's old, Postmenopausal, she's not able to conceive, or Ktana, or she's too young to conceive, or islandess, or she's sterile in some way or another, or she ain't really lay laid, or she used some type of contraceptive. So, what do we see in this brisa? We see here in this brisa that there is a singular shita that is opposed to Rav, to Rav Yossi, and that is the shita of Rav Meir. It does say the Gemara Rav Yehuda here, but the Meforshim, the Gra, as well as other shitas. Um, uh, uh, does do change it? This is a machlokas, however, because the Gospetzionim highlights that in the uh, in Tosfos and Daf Lamedalid that it says Rabbi Yehuda. So that just goes to show you that uh, at different times in history, we had different versions of the Gemara. The Balei Atosvos had a Gemara like we have, where it says Rabbi Huda, but the Gra says it has to be an error uh, because Rabbi Huda was not Rabbi Yossi. We know what Rabbi Yossi holds, and Mutar Le'aris, no problem. So therefore, we do see that there is a Shita that is the contrast dissenting opinion of Rabbi Yossi, and that is the Shita of Rabbi Meir. Then, uh, then the story takes a change. We had said that Rabbi Yochanan holds like Rabbi Yossi, but Amr Rabbi Chia Barab Chazer Bar Rabbi Yochanan. He changed his mind. He said we no longer hold like Rabbi Yossi. And Amr Rabbi Yossi, if he hadar be, we must nisan the karma hadar be. If in fact he uh, retracted his opinion, if Rabbi Yochanan changed his opinion from saying we hold like Rabbi Yossi to saying we don't hold like Rabbi Yossi, it must be that he learned the Mishnah from karma. Who knows what karma is? Karim Biyavne. Why was Karim Biyavne referred to as Karim Biyavne? Rose and Rose. Exactly right. So that's where it comes from, is that it looked like a kerem. It looked like rows of, uh, you know, like rows of vines for, for grapes. Titania, I'm Rabbi Shmuel ben Oshrab Yochanan ben Baroka. Shemati mi picha chamin be kerem biyavne. I saw... I heard, I should say, and that probably translates better. I heard from the wise people, the Chachamim, in the Kerem Biyavne, which is, of course, where the yeshiva gets its name from. And uh, there were rows of people learning. Right, all set up in rows. Kulan Tzrichos Lahamten Shlosha Chodashim. And this is much easier to follow because this is the Shita of the Rabbim. Now it's Yachid Virabim Halacha Kirabim. So when Rav Yochanan found this Brisa, he said, it's great that Rav Yossi disagrees with Rav Meir. That's fine. But what do we do about this Brisa, which is a Rabbim Brisa? It must be that this is the Halacha. That's why Rav Yochanan changed his tune. He said initially it was like Rav Yossi because he thought initially it was like it was Rav Yossi against Rav Meir. But once he saw this Mishnah from, uh, from Karen Biyavna, from the yeshivas where there's rows and rows of people learning, and a group of Chachamim, he said, it can't be that the things like Rav Yochanan. He's a, das, he's, he's a shita of a Yachid. And Yachid Virabim Halacha Kirabim. He says to he said to him, when you get to uh, Rav Zerika, I want you to ask a shayla for me. In front, uh, I'm sorry. Yirmiya said to Rav Zerika, when you get to Rav Yabo, I want you to ask him a question. Did he ever say that the din was like Rav Yossi? After all, we have a Stam Mishnah. If the Stam Mishnah seems to be exactly the opposite of Rav Yossi, and we know that the Stam Mishnah is always the Din, how could Rav Yochanan ever have Paskin like Rav Yossi in the first place? Doesn't make any sense. So the Gemara spits back a little bit of fire. Amar Lei, de Ramalacha, Lochash, Lakimche. Whoever asked this question, he did not grind his flour very well. 
Uh, we know, of course, in Kemach, in Torah, all the Torah that you can say about this, the point is that he didn't learn well. He didn't learn sharply enough. He didn't distill the Gemara to its finest parts because had he done that, he would have realized that it wasn't a Stam Mishnah. Why not? Because says the Gemara, Stam ve'achar kach machlokasi. It's not a regular Stam. It's a Stam ve'achar kach machlokas. It's a Stam Mishnah, which is followed by a Mishnah that discusses a machlokas on this topic. The ein halacha kistam. And in such a case, when you have Stam ve'achar kach machlokas, so then the halacha is not like the stam. So you at you said to me, how could Rav Yochanan have ever held like Rav Yossi? Hare, there's a stam mishnah. The Gemara says it's not a stam mishnah. It's stam ve'acharkach machlokas. They're different. It's one mishnah followed by a machlokas. It's not what you think it is. You thought it was stam. It's not stam. It's stam ve'acharkach machlokas. Domar Rav Papa v'item Rav Yochanan machlokas ve'acharkach stam halacha kistam. When there's first a machlokas and a mishnah and it's followed by a stam, then we pass in like the stam. But in our case, where it's stam ve'acharkach machlokas ain't halacha kistam. So it's very reasonable that Rav Yochanan would have been of the opinion that he holds like. Yossi, because that was a case of stam ve'achar kach machlokas. Story. Mistamech ve'ozel Rabbi Abo akatved Rabbi Nochum Shami. Rabbi Abo uh, was putting some weight uh, on the shoulder of Rabbi Nachum, uh, his, uh, his his Shami, his servant, and mankit ve'ozel halchos aminei. They were talking and learning. Bo aminei machlokas ve'achar kach stam mai. What's the case? What's the halacha if, there, if the first Mishnah that's presented is a machlokas? And only afterwards do we have a stam Mishnah. In a case like that, there's obviously a, a sequence of events in the Mishnah. So we quoted the machlokas, and because we put the stam Mishnah afterwards, it shows us that we pass things like the sheet of the stam. What if it's a case of stam ve'achar kach machlokas? That's our case. That's what we're dealing with. What if we first have a case of stam, a Mishnah quoted uh, a shita with no name, and a, a subsequent Mishnah says that it's a machlokas mai. What then is the case? Amar le'ein halacha kistam, just like we've been saying. Asks the Gemara a subtlety within this sugya. Stama de masnisen u machlokas bibraisa mai. Now we know that there's four different collections of authorship in the Tanaim. There is Mishnah, Brisa, Tosefta, and Medrash Chazal. So here the Gemara is saying, what if you have a stam Mishnah that's in regular Mishnah, Rabbi Huda Nasi, but in the Brisas, which were by and large penned by Reb Chia, there we see that there's a machlokas. My so Amar le halacha kistam. The halacha is that we follow the stam. Why is that? Because we always give precedence to a mishnah over a brisa. If ever there's a machlokas between the two, we always give precedence to the mishnah over the brisa. Then the Gemara asks a question, and we're going to answer with we're going to answer with a question that this is impossible, and we'll stop at the top line of Mem Gimel and Aleph. Machlokas b'masnisen. What if the machlokas is in Rabbi Yehuda's mishnayis? The stama b'brisa. And the Stam Shita of the Tanoim is found in a Brisa, but not in a Mishnah. Mai. So Amar Lei, the Gemara says, Rebbe lo shana. It had to be something that Rebbe taught. Lo. How else would Rebbe have ever gotten this? Why isn't this question asked on both cases? It should be asked in both cases. We, so there's no answer to this question, but the Gemara does, does ask initially, oh, hold on one second. What the, the question two lines from the bottom was, what if you have the Stam and the Mishnah and the Machlokas and a Brisa? So then we said the Halacha is like the Stam. Then we reverse it and say, what if the Machlokas is in the Mishnah and the Stam is in the Brisa? And the Gemara says, Rebbe never thought that to Rebbe. That's impossible. There's no way for that to happen. We'll pick up right here tomorrow on the top line of Imgil Amaral, wishing you all a good moed and a beautiful night. I will not be having